Hello once again. <clears throat> now we're back to the ME262. Uh, as you can see, I sanded down the party that I had put on in the last video. And uh, yeah, it had quite some fitting issues. Uh, I told you about the nose pieces. And this is what it looks like when it's all smoothed out. So it'll look at least uh, semi good. Uh, when it's all painted up, but uh, it's never going to be exactly perfect. But uh, the nose piece is going to be white, anyways, and the white color hides the imperfections quite good. So, uh, and anyways, uh, just this big piece of flat aluminum is never going to be super straight for a long time in wartime conditions. But, uh, I digress, I think. I'm not really sure what that word means anyway. But, uh, yeah. So, this dude is almost ready to start painting a bit on it. Now, uh, I don't normally primer my models, but... Uh, in this case won't be any different, even though I have these big patches of white on it. Because usually I paint like really thick uh, paint or heavy paint coats so you can't really see it through and I have decided also that uh, when I paint this I'm gonna do some pre-shading now I've only pre-shaded uh, two times before the first time I did it I just used the pencil I say pencil because that's very close to the Icelandic word for a paintbrush <laughs> I meant I did it with a paintbrush just painted the black along the panel lines and uh, the re final results uh, show the pre-shading is quite harsh with the straight cut lines like that and the second time I did it I just uh, had a tiger tank I think it was no it was a panther a uh, panther tank and I, I just painted it uh, entirely black before painting the camo scheme so it was sort of a pre uh, pre-shade effect but uh, this one is gonna be my first uh, proper pre-shade with uh, the airbrush so it will be fun to see how that turns out since as I s said before I tend to paint quite heavily and hide my pre-shading but this time I'm really gonna try try and do thin and uh, precise painting so, well, hit the camera quite a lot. Uh, anyways, before I can paint, you can see I got the canopy pieces right there. And I am in the process of uh, masking the canopy. Now, I used to do it with the plain old masking tape. And that works, that works, but it's getting around the uh, awkward shapes of some cannabis it can be quite hard so this time I am trying a new product that I saw some people use on the YouTubes um, I asked my wife about it uh, she is studying to be uh, some kind of a laboratory person <laughs> and this is called parafilm M laboratory laboratory film and uh, what this is, is basically clear stretchable film made of plastic and it is self adhesive when you stretch it so as of right now it is not, it is just like this uh, it's not adhesive at all, if I take the packing paper, paper off uh, the other side has no adhesive to it so you have to stretch it and pull it over the canopy or the thing you're, that you're gonna mask off now uh, as to where you can get this in America or wherever in the world I have no idea what kind of a store you would get this in maybe a pharma pharmacy or something but um, since this is really expensive over here and my wife says that she only gets uh, issued a small portion at school where she's learning her stuff because it's so expensive but I just 
on on a whim decided to try and check eBay for parafilm. Turns out it is not that expensive over there, and free shipping from uh, I think it was Hong Kong. When it got here pretty quick with uh, uh, registered mail and everything, so yeah, I was pretty happy. This is a 10 meter long roll. Uh, I think I paid what 13 bucks for it or something. So yeah, that's pretty good I think. But um, I'm going to film the process of me finishing off masking. I already did, already did the back and the front piece. As you can see, I uh, didn't really go to uh, the perfect job of it. This is only the first time I'm uh, using this on uh, Canopy. I've only used this before on my my Dragon 172nd scale Humvee. And that's not really a good uh, point to test this out on, since the windows on that are basically flat slabs of glass. So yeah, I think I'm going to change up the camera angle a bit so you can see better what I'm doing and uh, we're gonna try this out together and I'm gonna show you the process of how to put this on okay so as you can see I cut off uh, a piece that is quite considerably bigger than the canopy and uh, uh, that's why, that's because, I mean, uh, when you put this on, you have to have something to hold on when you stretch it and pull it every every which way. Uh, and also, it's going to make it a bit easier for me to handle on camera, because I don't want to be awkward on camera now, do I? Because that's never happened before. But anyways, uh, before I start doing this, I just want to mention that uh, I'm doing this kind of for the first time. This is an experiment for me, and uh, the way I do it may not be the right way to do it, but uh, it is a way to do it, I hope. Since uh, I already managed to do it on this, I think it'll work just fine. So anyways... Uh, you got your piece cut out and you have to make sure it's a little bit bigger than the, the glass or the piece that you're gonna mask uh, so you can handle the film while you mask it and uh, if you can pull it from the backing paper because I want to have it easier to handle pull it from the backing paper throw the backing paper away uh, then you take, hold it firmly, and you can see it is not quite transparent. But uh, you have to pull it, and it pulls. You can't pull it too much because it will break eventually. But when you start pulling it off, and then you stretch it, it's much like vacuum forming in a way. But then I like to stretch it down on top of the canopy piece and preferably without any creases in it I like to keep it as smooth as possible although even if you do get some creases it is just a matter of uh, smoothing them out with your fingernail closing the uh, closing it up so you won't get any any bleeding through where that is now if you stretch it too much it's at this stage where you will get holes in it and that's not good but since I'm painting with acrylics it's okay if I get tiny holes in it because uh, I can just take it off again with a toothpick or something so that's basically how easy it is look even with all the different shapes and uh, this is a stretch mark, not a crease. But uh, even with the awkward shape of the canopy, it would have taken me a long time to just to get to this stage with the tape. But now all I have to do is take my hobby knife with a fresh sharp blade and just cut along the lines. And because this uh, film is transparent now, 
it makes following the lines on the canopy even easier. Uh, yeah, same problem as always, not auto autofocus and camera. But yeah, I'm gonna very carefully cut along the lines. Now this, I must admit, is not quite a fresh blade, but I did cut the other pieces with it and that worked fine. So yeah, no, it's not a very interesting procedure going on right here, and I'm not a very interesting person, so I'm not talking very much, I know, but uh, bear with me, this is the first time I'm actually uh, doing this kind of progress on camera, <laughs> trying to keep a soft voice, it's my radio voice, breaking up. Oops. And even if it lifts up a bit when you're cutting it, it's not a big deal. You can just uh, press it down again with your thumb. It'll stick again. And because it is no adhesive on it, it leaves no residue when you take it off again none whatsoever or at least that's what I'm told so yeah uh, I don't know why I am taping myself cutting this but uh, I'm just gonna make a little jump cut here and cut the other lines off and then I'm gonna uh, pull it off so I think I got it cut open the whole way and now it's just a matter of pulling it away very carefully if there's like a corner that I didn't cut completely through or something but look at that perfect except I seem to have nicked the film a little bit over here but I can fix it with some more film or tape or whatever but yeah this is how easy this is to use as you can see the matte part is the film uh, I am super stoked about this product and I'm looking forward to use this in, a fu in the future and uh, we'll see how this turns up out like I say, I did this in a matter of a few minutes, but with the tape I work so slow that it would probably have taken me an hour to do, because I use uh, just regular painter's tape. Uh, I use this one to mask my canopies, because it's uh, quite thin. Uh, I can put down one strip at a time, and then that's how I work all the weird angles and curves <laughs> that's my wife watching uh, friends but uh, yeah so now I'm just gonna put the, the headrest in the glass I'm gonna put the glass on the plane I've already test fitted all the glass pieces and they fit quite nicely and smooth on top of the plane and uh, have them face the right way maybe and not fall inside the plane this is always the part of uh, the plane build when I start to get really excited because now you have the finalized outline of the plane and uh, this is gonna take I need to faddle a bit with it to get it to fit uh, smooth and flush but yeah I'm gonna quickly put that on and I'm gonna wait like at least an hour for the 
contact a clear glue to set properly and then I'm gonna start uh, the pre-shade process so the pre-shading is real man it definitely looks like the pictures I've seen of planes when people pre-shade them doesn't it uh, it's my first time doing it proper like I said before so anyways uh, this is what it looks like in the pre-shade uh, era but uh, what I wanted to say right now is uh, you notice how I had all that white putty uh, visible so what I did because I'm a lazy bastard instead of priming the whole plane because I don't really prime my models I only sprayed uh, a similar gray to the kit plastic over the white spots to sort of even out the gray so I won't get uh, unwanted color modulation when I spray it and also worth a mention I guess but I think to me it's common knowledge by now but maybe some of you don't know this uh, when you have a canopy like this you can see uh, the color on the inside of the canopy that's why before I started uh, anything else on the outside paint I painted over the canopy with the interior color as you can see right there or though not really since it's very close to the kit plastic on the camera but to the naked eye there's a big difference and now uh, already set up to start painting the white so the pre-shading worked uh, fine for me or at least I'm pretty happy with it don't think the camera will pick this up but uh, Oh, it looks quite good to the naked eye so now I need to paint the next color which is gonna be the pale blue gray for most part of the plane and to do that I need to mask off the nose and here here is where I am going to stop and bring up some pro tips for you guys because of course I'm a pro model builder or not no one is but anyways <laughs> to mask off the irregular shape of the nose of the plane I am going to try and use one of these uh, if you've seen the Tamiya, the new Tamiya tape that goes around compound curves and stuff and bends and squiggles and wiggles and does everything you want uh, out of tape that you regularly regularly can't go around corners and stuff uh, since that is really expensive and not available in my country I thought to myself wait wait a second haven't they been painting curves and uh, like flame paint jobs on muscle cars for for decades by now and I've seen this on many shows on the Discovery Channel when they're rest uh, doing car restorations and stuff this is a fine line masking tape that uh, handles compound curves and this has been available in auto parts and auto paint stores for uh, many 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 years and also you get this big roll for probably half the money you pay for the Tamiya compound tape now this is a three millimeter tape this is quite uh, a thick one you can get this in various thicknesses and I think the smallest one they had at my store today was a one millimeter but I decided to go with a three millimeter since I think I can get the most out of it and uh, yeah just to show you a little bit how it works it's exactly like the Tamiya tape 
and this is for automotive use also so even after you bake it in an oven it still comes off clean and you see you can take if you've seen car restoration shows you've seen this before always follow up with your finger and bam you get a curved tape and it's completely smooth down on the mat so yeah that's uh, trip no tip number one if you need to get this expensive Tamiya tape just go to the auto parts store and get a uh, fine line masking tape and also if you have an auto parts or auto paint store close to you you can get many many things there like rattle can primers uh, this one is acrylic specially made for plastics and on the rare occasion when I prime my kit, kits, which has happened, I've used this one time, and I'm about to use it a second time on another build. Uh, it works great. It's self-leveling. It's super smooth, and I like it a lot. And also, I got today at the auto parts store aluminum mesh. There's a big sheet of just. Uh, mesh and it looks just as good as any, as any photo edge stuff you get for like uh, panzer intake grills and, st and uh, such things you can also use this for when 124 scale auto auto car models I was gonna say and I'm even thinking this could be used like as a mesh fence of sorts in uh, 135th scale so yeah I just got this because I'm gonna do experiments with it and I think this has many uses this is a uh, aluminum mesh specifically designed to fix holes in uh, auto bodies you cut this into shape and then you can put the uh, uh, plexiglass or P38 they say use that like plastic stuff fix up a hole I don't know. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do now is continue painting the bird. Right, so I had not planned on uh, making a cut here, but I just noticed I have a really long video already, so I better make a quick ending to this one, huh? I painted on the uh, pale blue gray, as you can see and I am super happy with how the pre-shading turned out uh, the camera is picking it up a little bit here uh, so yeah I just wanted to show you guys this and, and say goodbye for this video or this segment I'm gonna wait till tomorrow for this to uh, cure a bit it was a trip painting this I dropped the plane twice one time in my water bottle and yeah I think I managed to save it all right though uh, we'll see how she turns out so next video the final two colors of the camo and maybe something more I don't know anyways thanks for watching I uh, hope you to see you on the next one